Hi, I'm Oliver Goodbrod, an authorized CUT trainer from EGITS. Welcome to this learning video based on material taken from the CUT Essentials training course. With these videos, we will be giving you the key insights into CUT as well as demonstrate the type of in-depth training available in the classroom-based CUTE Essentials training course. So, let's create a custom tree model in five steps. So the first step would be just to create a read-only model. The second would be to create an editable model where the user can edit the data. In the third step, we will add, insert and remove features to our model. The fourth step will be a lazy model which just loads the data needed. And the fifth step would be to enable drag and drop operations based on this model. So let's first give a little introduction on what we want to do in this example. So we have a helper class which is just called node. This node is just a representative of maybe your hardware device driver or anything you would like to have just a hierarchical structure of nodes. So in this node we just have a data function, we have a, a text string and we have the parent-child relations. So the first step is the read-only model. The read-only model is derived from QAbstract item model and re-implements the index, the parent, the row, column count and data. And let's take a closer look to some important helper methods. So these helper methods you have to re-implement for your kind of needs. So the main idea of these helper methods is to convert an index into a node and a node into an index. So let's have a look at the source code. The index for a node function is implemented here and it shows you how to convert a node pointer into a Q model index. So first we check if the node is equal to the root item, then we just return an empty Q model index representing the root model index. So if it is something else than the root, we just calculate the row and in this case the column is always zero and then we create a QModel index with the function createIndex. We specify the row, column and the node pointer. So this is an important thing to keep in mind that the node pointer is just an internal pointer which represents the node item. So if we take a look at the other way, how to convert a QModel index into a node pointer, we just have to check whether the QModel index is valid and if it is valid, we just return the internal pointer representation within this QModel index. So the third helper function is to calculate the index for a specific node. So therefore, we take the node pointer and ask the parent about the child index of this specific node so that we return the integer index of this node. And with these three helper functions we can implement the rest of our model. For instance, we can implement the data function by just calling the node data function for the specific node pointer. So how do we get the node pointer? We simply convert the QModel index 
to the node pointer by calling the node for index function. The row count is also pretty simple because we just ask the parent node of this index how many children does it have. The parent implementation of the model is that we first convert the Q model index of the child into a node pointer, which is representing the child node. And with the child node, we can resolve the parent node pointer. So there is some special treatment for the root. If it is the root item, we just return an empty Q model index. Otherwise, we will calculate the correct row. Column is always zero and we create the index for the parent item. The index function is also very important to be implemented correctly because it gives us the correct Q model index based on the parent index, the row and the column. So in this case we just check if it has an index and if yes we just convert the parent index into a node pointer we can resolve the child node pointer and based on this information we just create an Q model index for the specific row, column and the child node pointer, which is just the internal pointer representation of the child node. So now we have a model which represents the data, but in step two we would like to make the model editable so that the user can change the data. So therefore we have to re-implement the setData function and to set the correct flags for the specific items. Again let's take a look at the source code. So first of all we have to tell the items that editing is allowed. So therefore we just say if the QModel index is valid, we just set the item is editable flag. So when the user has modified the data, the setData function will be called and we have to take care that the data has, will be saved in the model correctly. So therefore, we just resolve the QModel index to the correct node pointer and then we store the text within the node text property. So don't forget to emit the data change signal at the end of the setData function to notify all views that there has been some data change. So in step 3 we would like to insert or remove data to our model. So therefore we have to implement the insert node, remove node or remove all node functions. In the insert node function we first convert the parent node pointer to the correct index and then we tell the model that the begin insert rows has started. After that we can do our internal operations like adding the children to the parent node. And at the end we have to notify the views that the insert has ended correctly. So the same applies for the removing of nodes. Same we convert 
the node. First of all, we resolve the parent node pointer, then we convert the parent node pointer to the correct Q model index. We calculate the correct row and start the begin remove rows. We are doing some in internal operations to remove the children at the correct position and at the end we have to call the end remove rows function. So in step 4 I would like to explain to you about a lazy model. So if you have large data sets and you want to load data only incrementally, you can implement the lazy model like this by overriding the three method has children, can fetch more and fetch more. So the implementation is as follows. So you can incrementally populate your model as follows. Here in the sample we have a maximum count of children equal 100. So in while the children count is less than the max children, we return the boolean value can fetch more to be true. So whenever we can fetch more data, you have to implement the fetch more function to get the next chunk of data. So as you see here, encapsulated into the begin insert rows and insert, and insert rows, you just populate the next part of your data. Step 5 shows the drag and drop operation based on custom models. If you remember the previous session, this is how drag and drop operations are added to your model. So first you have to set the correct flags, you have to set the support to drag and drop actions, you have to think about the correct mine types and mine data, and you have to think about removing rows and inserting rows correctly. Let's take a look at the source code. Here is the implementation of the flex function. So whenever we get a valid QModel index, we just enable drag and drop operations. If the user wants to drop on an empty area, which means that we have an invalid index, we just enable dropping support. The supported drag and drop options are copy and move and we define some special MIME types for our application. The MIME data function returns the specific MIME data for a given QModel index list. So it first iterates through the list of indexes and gets the data for every index. So in this case we just get the display row and convert this to a text string. Then we stream the text string into a QDataStream object. We create a new MindData object and we set the data for this specific MIME type to the encoded data and return the MIME data. So whenever the user wants to drop some specific MIME data, we just check for the correct action, we check that it has the correct format, and then we can convert the data to a QData stream and in this case we can just stream the content of the data stream 
to text again. Then we create a new node based on this mine data and insert this node to our model. So in model view part 2 you learned how to create your custom delegates, how to edit the item data, we learned how to use the data widget mapper to convert the data into your user widgets. We created how to use drag and drop and at the end we learned everything in our custom tree model. We hope you enjoyed this session of our Qt Essentials training. For the full experience including labs, Q&As and additional info we recommend you to attend the full multi-day Qt Essentials training course available from EGITS or any one of the Qt training partners. For full details check out qt.nokia.com Thanks for watching.